Alrighty, you guys. Today I thought I would do a rapid fire review of some of Sephora's best selling products. I recently did a video about the Sephora VIB sale. That thing went really well. So I thought I would just keep this train going and talk about what you might already have your eye on based on the best sellers list. Typically when I'm not sure where to start with a new brand or a new shopping outlet, I always start with the best seller. So let's dig in and and see if they're really worth all the hype. As most of you know, I have not bought makeup all year. I've been on a no buy and it's going really well. Going on nine months strong. So I'm not gonna have a lot of information about the newer bestsellers, but a lot of the OGs and the ones that have been on the bestseller list for a hot minute. Definitely got some insight there. I tried to get this video up as soon as possible because I didn't want it to go up so late that it was useless during the sale, but I'm working on a ton of stuff. I'm launching a Patreon in the beginning of September. Stay tuned to the end of the video. I'll leave a timestamp down below if you're interested in hearing all about that. I'm super excited about it. I've been working very, very hard on it. There's also a podcast coming and a Facebook group. So like I said, if you want all that info, stay tuned to the end. Real quick, I beg of you guys, if you really like my channel and you really enjoy my content, please come hang out with me on Instagram, Instagram stories. I am very active there. So if you don't see me on YouTube for a few days, I'm definitely there. I'm gonna ask you guys what you wanna see. I'll let you know what's coming up. If YouTube was playing you like it plays everybody and you never see that I posted a video, I always notify you on Instagram stories. Come hang out with me on Instagram stories for Christ's sakes. <laughs> That was rude. So the first thing I have on my list, I'm gonna be looking down at my phone a lot because I wrote some notes about this stuff. This is the Drunk Elephant Peptide, wait, the Drunk Elephant Proteiny Peptide Moisturizer. I recently did a video, like I said, about the Sephora sale where I advised you against getting two balls deep in the Sephora skincare section. Um, I did mention on that video that I have tried a few Drunk Elephant products. This was one of them and overall I did like it, however. In the interest of full transparency, you guys should know that I did not buy any Drunk Elephant stuff that I tried. It was sent to me in PR, which mostly through this no buy and through the act of not collecting a lot of makeup anymore at all and kind of not taking in a lot of PR if I can avoid it, I've realized that PR ultimately does sway my opinion of products a little bit because $70 is a lot of money for a moisturizer and for me to get it totally for free, like it would have to suck pretty, pretty hard for me to have any complaints with it. It does work really well. It says that the main benefits of it is that it kind of firms or plumps up your skin, which I did notice the effects of that. It did work, but once I stopped using it, the effects were gone as tends to be with these types of products, but I never bought it again. So I don't know if that says anything to you guys. I just think that if I was going to drop $70 on a moisturizer as much as I did enjoy this one, I don't know if my $70 would go to that, but having not paid for it, I didn't hate it. I don't know if this review has been helpful at all this product. I guess if you have the $70, you've never tried a nice moisturizer before and you can sustain this price tag, go for it. But there's cheaper alternatives out there. Let's get real. Estee Lauder Double Wear. I bought this in 2017. I have not repurchased it since. It's not so much because I didn't like it. Um, it's more that the type of product that it is, I'm just not into anymore. It's an infamously full coverage and as a result, pretty matte foundation. And I'm just not about that life at this point <laughs> at all. The really interesting thing about this product, I have to say is that a lot of people in my real life, when I say real life, I mean people I know from back in the Dizzy, Facebook friends, you know what I'm saying? They will write me and ask me about foundation all the time. I get tons of questions about foundation. And the first question I always ask is, well, what are you currently using? These people in question that I'm talking about have jobs like bank tellers, waitresses, school teachers, like they got regular nine to fives and they're wearing this foundation every day. I don't know how they're doing it. I found the foundation to be beautiful, very flawless, very Instagram ready, but I couldn't imagine Imagine wearing such a full coverage foundation in the broad of daylight. Full coverage is just a lot harder to deal with. You, you don't have a lot of wiggle room. If your color match isn't absolutely stunningly perfect, you'll look like you have a lot of makeup on. So I think this product would do really well for nights out. I think it's really good for photography, but if you have a nine to five working down <laughs> at the feed store, why did I just say that? I don't know anybody who works at a feed store. If you just have a regular nine to five and you don't ever want wanna like bust out something full coverage for special occasions, I don't think you're gonna like this. But if you're one of the Instagram girls, 
you might love it. It's just not my vibe. The Anastasia Brow Wiz. I feel like a lot of a lot of us were using this pencil for the longest time. Anastasia was truly one of the first people to bring a lot of brow to the to the market. I feel like I started using this pencil for the first time in like 2011. I definitely like this product. It's just that in 2019, eight years later, after the very first one I ever purchased, we just have a lot more options now. And a brand like NYX, for example, makes a pencil identical to this, essentially. I've used that one many, many years, and it works perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. And it's about half, if not more than half of the price of this. If you have the budget for this pencil, go for it. But I feel like with your beauty routine, anywhere you can save money, go ahead and try. And I feel like with this pencil, maybe try something else. Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. I kind of get the impression from this bestseller list, based on a lot of the things that are still on there, that they might be best simple bestsellers simply because they were like the first, I don't know, hit of that particular category. And they were bought so much and they've been bought so much for so long. What I'm trying to say is this powder's fine. There's nothing wrong with it, but there's so many more out now that it's really gonna come down to what you're looking for. I don't know if people are still baking the way they used to, but when they did, everybody was using the Laura Mercier translucent powder. It is very smooth, very silky. It has a nice like kind of vanilla tone to it. And I do believe they actually have a deeper one now for other skin tones, which is great. But I don't know, you guys, I think this is gonna depend a lot on what you need it for. If you just need a really nice overall setting powder, I do find that there are other ones that are a little more lifelike and skin-like. This one is very matte, so it just depends on what you want. I guess I'll say if you've never had a good loose setting powder and you just want one to kind of build a frame of reference around, this isn't a bad one to do it with. Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. You guys, when I saw this, it really took me back. I have decided, just so you know, that when it comes to determining whether or not I recommend a product, there are two things that have to come into play. The first one is that did I pay for it at least, at least once? And have I repurchased it? If the answer is no to both questions, I do not recommend it. If the answer is no to one of those questions, I still don't know if I recommend it. That's what makes a favorite. Favorites videos are very misleading if you think about it. Like if someone asked me what my favorite movie is, it would be a movie I've seen a hundred times. It wouldn't be a movie I watched once in the spring of 2013 and never saw again, but claimed it was a favorite. I don't know. Anyway, as far as this foundation goes, this was the thing for a while there. I feel like it's a very expensive foundation at 60 something dollars. I, I don't know how much this foundation can compete with all that's out there now. Like I said, I feel like some of these products are best sellers for no other reason than that they were the big boys at one time and some people must just be diehard loyal to them because it's not that I'm afraid of an expensive foundation. The La Mer Soft Fluid Foundation, I love it. I'm about to buy my third bottle, but I just think that while this is a nice foundation, Drugstore has even stepped it up so much that I feel like it would be a really hard sell to get me personally to buy this again. I have bought it in like 2014 and crushed the bottle and never bought it again. So it must not have made a very good impression on me. I don't miss it. I will say it's nice, but $60 is a lot for something that's not completely knocking my socks off. So I don't think I'd recommend it. NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. This is a big yes for me. It is my current concealer. Typically with concealers, I'm very loyal to them for a long time. My concealer game hasn't changed much over the last six years. It was Pro Longwear from MAC for a long time. Then it was Urban Decay Naked Skin for a couple years. And from this year on, it's gonna be NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I even tried this a million years ago when it first came out and I was kind of like blase about it. But at this point in my life, I'm a I'm obsessed with it. Oh, I can't believe I just said that. I hate when people use that. I enjoy it thoroughly. It's pigmented, it's blendable, it's non-drying, it's just gorgeous. The coverage is amazing. It's one of those concealers that if I ever did pro makeup artistry again, it would absolutely go in my kit. NARS as a whole, I've learned this year, is probably my favorite complexion line out there in terms of I have the most concealers, the most foundations, all that stuff from them, and I use them all the time. So the NARS Radiant Creaming Concealer is a yes for me. Next is the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush finish powder. This is another big love for me. I don't even know 
how many times I've repurchased this thing. I know that I'm about to repurchase it again. It is a beautiful powder. I really only use it to set the center of my face and underneath my eyes. I tend to be more oily, particularly in the summer. So I have to set that area with powder. I don't even know what I was using before this. <laughs> I've been wearing it for like two years now. What I like about it is it is the softest. Like literally, if you just touch the pan, it is the softest powder you're ever gonna touch. It's, it's like hydrating and mattifying at the same time, which makes zero sense when I say it out loud, but it sets the areas of the face that you apply it to perfectly without drawing it out and looking cakey at all. It's something I can reapply throughout the day and it doesn't get shiny or like cake up on top of itself. Some powders do that. You guys, if I've said it once, I said it a thousand times. I feel like if I keep putting it out to the universe, Charlotte herself will contact me and we will ride off into the sunset to get, I don't know, that's weird, why did I say that? Anyway, I love Charlotte Tilbury. It's one of my favorite brands for a reason. This is one of those products that kind of helps solidify that brand as a very strong contender for me. I friggin' love it. Urban Decay All Nighter, another classic and for a reason. I did a video, <laughs> let me just clear this up right now. I did a video early this year talking about products that you should not buy a whole lot of. And one of those things was setting sprays. And when I was talking about that, I said that you pretty much only need a hydrating setting spray because honestly, they all do the same damn thing. Some of them are way too expensive, but I can't tell a damn, I can't tell a difference. Like tried tons of them. I have nothing I'm super loyal to. They're very interchangeable to me. But I also said you might benefit from a mattifying or makeup locking in place kind of product. I said that the Urban Decay All Nighter was a good example of the lock it in place one. And then I also said, don't use it every day. It's not good for your skin. People were wilding out wanting to know why. Any product that you guys buy that tends to claim longevity as like the main selling point of it, most likely contains a lot of alcohol. Alcohol dries things out. And when it comes to your makeup breaking up, a lot of that comes from the spacious glands in your face producing oil. So that is why I said, don't use Urban Decay all night or all day or day because too much alcohol for your skin is not good for it. I personally love this product. I'm never without it, but I'm not running through bottles of it. It's something I'm really only using when I'm about to have a day or if I'm going out, like I don't douse myself in it regularly. But as a good friend, I do feel the need to remind you guys of the alcohol content in it. And PSA, just check the alcohol, alcohol content in anything you use. I've literally been buying that stuff for a decade now. So if that's not a, like a tried and true fave it, I don't know what is. Cap on D tattoo liner. Okay, so through my peripheral vision of scrolling around YouTube this year, last year, I don't even know when it was. I feel like there was a scandal with this. I don't know what the scandal was because I didn't watch the videos, but I don't mean to recommend a bad, dangerous product if it ended up being something along those lines. Anyway, this is an expensive eyeliner. <sighs> this is gonna come down to what you use eyeliner for. I honestly feel like if you don't want to bust out a wing regularly, you're better off just using gel eyeliner. Creating a thin line of eyeliner with a brush and a drugstore gel liner, and drugstore gel liners are perfectly fine. I've never tried a high-end one that was better than a drugstore one. I think that's kind of all you need. When it comes to felt tip liners, I feel like they're really good for creating a wing or if eyeliner is just your jiggity, jiggity, jiggity jam. Ultimately, what a good eyeliner to me comes down to as far as a felt tip goes is the brush, it's how firm it is and how evenly it distributes the product. As far as drugstore felt tip liners, I've tried a few. I don't know that I've repurchased many of them. I had a NYX one that I used recently that was fine at first and then one day it just blew its load all over my completely finished eye makeup and I had to wash it all off, oh, never again. But there is a NYC one that's more of a brush that works really good. There's an e.l.f. one that has a brush that works really good. This is really gonna come down to how often you use eyeliner and if you have the budget to replenish this, should you fall in love with it? Because I do remember it being a solid product. $20 solid, that's up for you to decide. It Cosmetics CC Cream. This stuff is interesting to me. Um, CC refers to color correcting. I feel like this kind of came out and had its moment around the time BB creams are really big. Do you guys remember that when BB creams were just, and the funny thing is BB cream in America didn't mean anything. BB creams were developed in South Korea by plastic surgeons for their clients to use to protect their skin and cover up their um, recovery 
irritation and things like that. So then they brought it over to America and then absolutely nothing over here it was basically a tinted moisturizer. But this guy stuck around. It's very interesting. Nobody uses BP, BB creams anymore, but this stuff still sells out like hotcakes. I like this stuff for a lot of reasons. It's very glowy. It has a lot of benefits to it in the form of sunscreen. It has hyaluronic acid. It has peptides. I don't know what the concentration of those ingredients are in this product, but I don't mind a makeup and skincare hybrid at all. It's, it's definitely not something I'm gonna turn my nose up at. It's extremely glowy. It's beautiful, but it breaks me out like crazy. Like I just can't use it very much. It breaks my best friend Jacqueline out as well. I gave her a bunch of bottles that I got in PR and she was like, I love this stuff, but I think it's breaking me out too. I like this for mature women and I like this for women who are a little more no fuss, no muss. I don't see a lot of people using IT Cosmetic CC Cream to film a YouTube video to go to the club. Like, I don't know if that's what I would say it's for because there's so much sunscreen in it. So it's going to flash back at you, but it's a nice product. I can see why it would be on here. I feel like it's something that if it didn't break me out, I would have it on hand for everyday wear all the damn time. Benefit Gimme Brow. I have been using this or a version of this consistently for about four years now. It literally changed the way I do my brows and the way I look at brow makeup at all. I think prior to that, I was using the Anastasia Clear Brow Gel, which I realized after I bailed on it, how plastic and kind of flat and artificial it was making my brows look. And when you're already putting brow pencil and brow powder and then like shellacking them down, it just doesn't look very good. I found this stuff and fell completely in love. This is a fiber building brow gel, similar to those fiber building mascaras that like build fibers upon themselves to lengthen or give the appearance of more length and lashes. This does it with your brows and the brush is itty bitty. So it clings on to every available hair you have and pushes it up and moves it around and gives it a very natural, beautiful texture. It looks so real. This is something like on camera, I'm trying to decide if you can tell. You might not be able to tell on camera how well it works, but in person, it makes a massive, massive difference in the overall appearance of my brows. I've tried a few other things over the years similar to it that I like. Right now I'm really into the Urban Decay one, but this is the OG and I will always go back to it. And every time I see people do their brow routine without a fiber building brow gel, I'm just like, what? <laughs> it's anarchy! All right guys, that is it for the Sephora portion of this video. If you wanna go ahead and X out, I totally understand. I will catch you in the next one. But for the people that wanted to stick around here about Patreon, here's the skinny. I'm gonna try to talk quick. Patreon is going live on September 2nd. I'm starting a Patreon because I wanted a place where we could all hang out together and I could put content over there that I think you guys would enjoy, but I'm pretty sure will not do well on YouTube, either because the algorithm tells me so or because the way that I want to do it historically, mm, not the best platform to do it on. So a good example of this is makeup tutorials or beauty related content as a whole. When I do a makeup tutorial, you guys should know how much I have to edit out just to get it down to a remotely reasonable length because I could go on all day when I'm doing a tutorial about techniques and brushes and dupes. And if you're like this, try it this way. And if you're like that, try it that way. Like I, I would love to give you guys all this information, but I can't put an hour long video on YouTube. I mean, I could, but I'm not going to. Patreon is where that stuff will go. The beginning of Patreon, I'd say maybe the first two months, I'm only gonna have one guaranteed extra piece of content per tier. Um, there might be surprise posts over there, but I don't wanna promise you guys something that's definitely not coming. There will definitely be at least one extra piece of content over there per tier, but each of them will be based on what you wanna see more of. If you want more beauty related content, there's a tier for that. If you want something more personal, more hang out with me, more let's get to know each other, there's a tier for that as well. And the benefit of both tiers either way is there will be corresponding live streams with each piece of content that month. So for example, September, the whole thing I'm working on, you guys, you guys know, I've heard you. You're like, when are you gonna tell us how to use our collections? I've been waiting to push us all at the same time because in September I'm launching capsule makeup collection stuff. And on YouTube, for example, I will bring out my capsule collection and show you what I'm using and why. Patreon will have a deep dive into my capsule collection, but not only mine, dupes for everything that I have, who I think could benefit from mine, what number you are. So if you're a one, two, three, four, or five, once again, check the video down below if you have no idea what I'm talking about, what items in the capsule collection will be good for you based on your number. And then there'll be a live stream where I can answer any questions about your capsule collection. And the capsule collection thing is gonna be a quarterly thing. Every quarter, I'm gonna change it. The first one that goes out in September will be kind of like my baseline capsule collection. And then I'll probably change it a little bit in October so 
that it can be more holiday and festive and we have pieces in there to create all the holiday looks we want, but the base of the collection will always be the same. Also, as far as the Patreon, I am launching my podcast there first. I am launching a podcast where we can all hang out and talk together about these topics in the beauty community and the beauty industry that I'm very passionate about. I feel like talking on camera about this stuff isn't always the best venue for that type of content because I put on hair and makeup just to sit here and talk to a camera. I could easily just say it into a microphone and it, it'd be the same damn thing. You just wouldn't, you wouldn't get to see my face, which I know is just terrible. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> the podcast will not go live everywhere until November, but all of the podcasts will start on Patreon. Y'all have first access. And then once it is live everywhere, Patreon members will get the podcast first. I'm so excited to do the podcast. I'm very nervous. It's been a long time since I undertook a project that that is not in my wheelhouse, like editing and video and photography. I got it down now. This is a whole new thing, but I'm excited. But there's also a Facebook group coming and the Facebook group is going to be a place that if you don't wanna be a part of Patreon, it's still a cool little part of the internet. We can all hang out together and share our struggles. We can share the things that are inspiring us, the things that are motivating us. We can talk about beauty. We can talk about more than beauty, which is a part of my rebranding that I'm excited to do. I am stoked about all of this stuff. So once again, September 2nd, I will remind you guys frequently. Another reason I want you to hang out with me on Instagram because I will keep you updated over there as well. Okay, uh, I'm losing my voice. I gotta get out of here. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. Check the down bar for links to all my social media platforms and I will see you in the next one.